The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. What do you mean, quiet down? I'm not going to sell that. I'm buying into praise and worship. I'm buying into prayer. I'm buying into sacrifice like never before. I'm more fanatical than I've ever been. your Bibles, I'd like for you to open them with me to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 32. There is an amazing text. I've never preached on this before, but I want to share this in verse 25. And you have said to me, O Lord God, buy the field for money and take witness. Yet the city has been given to the hand of the Chaldeans. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? What, what I want you to see in this text is you need to understand what was taking place. They were being invaded. The Chaldeans were, were the Babylonians and they were coming and taking over the whole city. The whole nation was being lost. They were about to go into 70 years of captivity under Nebuchadnezzar. And everybody knows that the, it's kind of like, you remember, if you've, if you've been around long enough, if you've studied history, it's like in, in Vietnam when it became obvious that the war was lost to a degree, that everybody's trying to get out of the city. And this is the, the exact setting of that. They are selling. Everybody's selling. Everybody's selling. They're selling. And in the middle of that, God comes to Jeremiah and he says, buy the field. I want you to buy this land because I gave you this land. I gave you this field. I gave you this farm. I gave my people a land flowing with milk and honey. And yes, it looks bad. And yes, it looks like that you should probably sell but what I love about this story is God told him to buy when everybody else was selling. God told him there's some things you need to hold on to that everybody else is letting go of. And you need to be careful that when your ship comes in, you're not at the bus station. You need to be careful that you don't walk away from acres of diamonds that God has in your marriage and in your family and in your calling and in your purpose because of a season of discouragement when it looks like that, and especially when the pressure's on and everybody else is doing it. Just because everybody else is selling out doesn't mean we need to sell out. We need to buy in when they're selling out to our faith, to the, to the principles of this book, to prayer, to the truth of God's word. Let others go the other way. Let others say we don't need faith. We don't need God. We don't need the Bible. We don't need Jesus Christ. Let them sell it cheaply if they want to, but I'm buying in. I'm buying in. I'm buying in. Your ship is coming in. That's what I'm preaching. I'm telling you that the ships of prayer are coming in if you won't walk away. The ships of vision are coming in. The ships of dreams are coming in. The ships of holy aspirations and purpose, they will come in if you will stay where God has called you to stay. And sometimes that requires when others have given up and others have tried and failed and nobody in your family's held a marriage together and everybody, the history of the family is divorced, divorced, divorced. But somewhere in that family, you can get Christ in that house and you can say, we are not selling out. We're buying in like never before. In Jude chapter 1 in verse 13, it's an amazing verse. God is pronouncing judgment, severe punishment on the angels that did not keep their first estate. You remember the Bible teaches, I don't have time to proof text it, read your Bible for yourself, but the Bible, the Bible teaches that Lucifer was in heaven and one third of the angels followed him and there is a, a severe punishment that is pronounced in the book of Jude. It only has one chapter. And, 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 and one of those verses, verse 13, has a severe punishment for those angels that did not stay around the throne where they were supposed to be, but they exited with Lucifer. And he says this, he says that he has reserved them in darkness in a place 
uh, in their own shame because they were wandering stars. What a, a wandering stars. He called the angels that kept not that position that they were created to be in wandering stars. Why such severe punishment? They're held in chains. A star is defined as a fixed point. Much of the world in ancient Bible days was led by the stars. They had to navigate the men at sea by the stars because it's a fixed thing. It doesn't wander. It doesn't shift because it doesn't feel like staying where it is. It's, 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 it's not a wandering star. A star was not designed to be moving all over the place. Much of the world was led, wise men, the only way they found Jesus Thank God it wasn't a wandering star, but it was a star that just burned bright over the stable and the wise men found it. In ministry, people won't find Jesus if we become wandering stars. That we're not really committed and we're not really sold out and we're not really serious about taking the gospel to the world. The characteristics of a star is it is to burn and it is to shine and it is not to move. It is to be fixed. It is to get its direction and stick with it and not change. Are you a wandering star? Are you committed to the house of God? Are you committed to the word of God? Are you committed to prayer? Are you committed to living for Jesus Christ? Our strength is in when we take a stand, when we make a stand for God. Make sure you're present when your answer comes. Nothing's going to shake me. Nothing's going to alter me. I'm buying the field. Others are having an auction. Others are selling everything. Don't you know, they were selling land cheap, cheap, cheap. And here's one guy, and if you read that story, God told him, said, not only do I want you to, I don't want, I just don't want you to just buy it, I want you to get the title deed. I want you to bury it in the property. And yes, you're going to go through a tough time for the next 70 years. But when you come back, you're going to dig it up and you're going to hold it up. And all these people who are trying to get land, you're going to say, I never gave up on what God promised me. And I've got a title deed to it. That's in your Bible in Jeremiah 32. You have to do that with the promises of God. God told Jeremiah, when everybody else wants to sell, you buy. The conditions that you're in now are not permanent. So just put your foot down and say, we're not going anywhere. God gave us this marriage. God gave me this family. And it may be tough right now, but the conditions are not permanent. They're just temporary. I've got a contract. I, I, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be blessed and your household. I've got a contract. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So it doesn't matter what hell's trying to do. I've got a contract. We have to, our problem in this generation is we want to lease it. We want to rent, but not buy. Joseph of Arimathea is one of my favorite characters because in the Bible he had a tomb uh, and, and he, he wasn't dead yet. And Jesus needed a tomb, but he really, he really didn't need a permit. You know, a tomb is not something you rent. A tomb is somebody moves in it, they're there for life. But he understood something that you need to understand. He understood, I'll let you use this because it's just going to get dark for three days and on the third day he's coming out. And maybe in your situation, it's dark right now, and it doesn't look good right now, and every voice in your head is saying, give up, and walk away, and you can't get free, and that alcoholism is destroying you, and you, there's no way out. But I'm telling you that if you'll get committed and buy in to the gospel and buy in to the truth of God's word, he'll bring you out. It's going to happen. Just stay there. God told Jeremiah, I want you to buy in a time of selling. Many people are selling the truth. Now look at this verse. Proverbs 23 and verse 23 says, buy the truth. Everybody read it out loud. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Now that means that 
New generations are going to come. New morals are going to come. New ideas are going to come. But I want you to buy the truth. And when everybody else is selling, selling, no, I don't believe that anymore. No, I don't believe marriage is between a man and a woman. No, I don't believe there's nothing wrong with getting drunk. I don't believe there's nothing wrong with slipping out on your wife a little bit. That's old and archaic. Those old dumb Christians. When everybody's selling... He says, I want you to buy the truth. I don't much believe there's a hell and a heaven. I don't know if there's any eternal life. I don't know if salvation is really that important. It's that important, and you better buy the truth and sell it not. Give the Lord a praise if you know I'm preaching the truth. You know, some churches are selling out the book of Acts. You know, the book of Acts is a book of miracles. And I, I, I'm not going to sell the book of Acts to meet the modern-day politically correct church world. This church was built on the power of God, and we're not interested in being nice and pretty. We're interested in seeing lives changed for the glory of Jesus Christ. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need miracles in the church. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm not selling that. I'm not selling that to be in your clique. I'm not that needy that I want to be in your clique if I've got to give up the power of the cross, the power of the blood of Jesus. That's not for sale. There's some non-negotiables. A lot of people are selling conviction of sin. Uh-oh. They're selling it, but we need to buy it. A lot of people are selling praying in the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. They're selling it cheaply, but I'm not selling it. I'm buying into it. A lot of people are selling sacrifice. They think all church is is to come and sit and everything's about you, but church is about sacrifice. Church is about taking up your cross. Church is about, and, and if you don't watch it, you think it's all about giving to you, but, 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 but we're, I'm not going to sell my sacrifice. I believe that it matters. And while some are selling worship and freedom in worship, we need to buy it. We need to shout more. We need more hand waving. Hallelujah. We need more hand clapping. We need, we, we need more dancing and leaping and rejoicing. I am not ashamed of it. My Lord, you, didn't, you don't know like I know what is done for me. Why would I quiet down? I have more than I've ever had. I'm more blessed than I've ever been. Why would I get quiet now? I don't care who's here. I don't care who comes. I don't care if the president comes. I want him to get in a good service like this if he does. I'm not selling that for the appeasement of people. Apostle Paul said, we don't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the power of God. We're selling out. People selling out. I remember when our church started growing. Um, we were over on Brown's Bridge, and it was just a, you know, a handful of people, and God started blessing. We had to knock the wall out. And we couldn't, we had to dig Y'all remember, any of y'all that were still alive back then, um, we had what we called the bottomless pit because we had parking and we rented the place beside us and cleaned it off and had parking. We had parking. Everybody's parked up on the grass. And then there was the bottomless pit. It was back behind the fellowship hall and it was straight down and you needed a four-wheel drive just to get out of there, but it was filled with cars. I've never seen anything like it. It was crazy. But you know, when the church started growing, I had to cross a bridge in my mind because people started coming from every direction and it felt like that some were trying to pull at who we were and what God had called us to do. And if you would just tone it down, 
if you would just come, I like Franklin Jensen's sermons, but, but, but if the music and if this and if the people are too excited and it doesn't take all of that, and I just made up my mind at some point, I'm not selling this. I'm not selling this. And you know what the Lord spoke to me? He, he said, never forget this. He said, he said, worship will never cause any people to leave. That you need. And if one leaves, God will send a hundred in their place who will say, pardon the noise. It's the sound of freedom. What do you mean quieting down? I'm not going to sell that. I'm buying into praise and worship. I'm buying into prayer. I'm buying into sacrifice like never before. I'm more fanatical than I've ever been. We've got... We've got more to praise God for than we've ever had. We need more fiery preachers. We need more fiery churches. If you sold your worship, you need to buy it back. You can't heat an oven with a snowball. I don't care how powerful you are. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how important you are. If you've sold your worship for those titles, David was king of Israel, took his king robe off and danced before the Lord with all of his might when he got the Ark of the Covenant back. He was saying, there's a king higher than me. There's a force higher than me. I have all this stuff, but I take it off and I worship the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Everybody take a praise break and give God thanks. Let the enemy know he won't take your worship. Praise God. I like that man in 2 Samuel 23. His name was Shama. He was one of David's mighty men. And the Bible said when the Philistines invaded, he stood in a pea patch. That's what lentils are. A ground full of lentils. He stood in a ground full of, he stood in a pea patch. Now, and notice what it said, and go back. And everybody else fled. All the others fled, it says in the next verse. And while the others fled, he stationed himself in the middle of a pea patch and defended it and killed the Philistines, and the Lord brought a great victory. Here's a guy standing out there in a field. It's nothing but peas, but he kind of had this attitude. You know, uh, I see them selling, and they're selling, and there's an auction over there, and they're selling, they're selling, everybody's selling, but he said, I think I'm going to buy this field because if I give the Philistines my pea patch, they're going to come and get my corn, and if they come and get my corn, they're going to take my okra, and then they're going to come after my collard greens, and nobody's taking my collard greens, so I'm just going to stand right here in this field, and I'm I'm going to fight. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. There comes a time when you have to stand. Don't care what they say. Don't care what they do. I'm going to stand for truth. I'm going to stand for the gospel. Hallelujah. Take another praise break. I'm preaching myself. Hey. Telling you that we need this morning to celebrate one of the greatest victories in the world. You know what? One of the turn to somebody and say, I'm gonna tell you one of the greatest victories in the world. Do it. Turn, I deputize you. Turn to some uh, one of the greatest victories in the world. Here it is. I'm still here. I may not have the greatest testimony. I may not be brother righteous, sister holiness, but you know what? I'm still here. I may have problems. I may have weaknesses. I may be struggling, but look at me in the house of God on a Sunday morning. I'm praising him. I'm still here. Others... Others who were better than me are not here. Others who were smarter than me are not here. But I'm still here. Oh, somebody shout with me. Somebody shout. Celebrate. I'm still here. I'm bought in. I thought about Simon Peter. If I could interview Simon Peter... Why do you think the Lord chose you to preach on the day of Pentecost? 3,000 people converted 
mass crusade, whole city turned upside down for Christ. Why did he choose you out of all the disciples? I think Simon Peter would say, I don't have any idea. He called me, a, he called me Satan one time. You remember when he tried to get tried to go to the cross and Simon said, No, Lord, that's not necessary. He said, Get thee behind me, Satan. You don't speak the things of God. Why did he use you? I don't know. I fell asleep in a prayer meeting in the Garden of Gethsemane. I was snoring. It was his last few hours, and I slept through the whole thing. I'm not a super saint. I was in the middle of a miracle and I started drowning. Bubbles, boop, 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 holding his hand up. You remember, he walked on the water for a little bit, but then he started drowning. See, we think it's our, our, our I'm, I'm just so holy. You'll never be holy. I tell you what God looks for, somebody that'll buy, buy in. I'm coming. My family's all messed up, but I'm coming. I had struggles this week, but I'm coming. I, you might have beer breath. You might have weed smells all in your clothes and everybody around you high because you came this morning. And they can sm but I'm so glad you're here. This is your kind of church. This is why we're here. All you got to do is just keep coming. He'll wash you. He'll cleanse you. He'll forgive you. He'll raise you, and he'll make you a shining star for the kingdom. So, so, so. Not many people's conviction list is getting longer. They're getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. It's time to buy in and quit selling out everything. Quit selling out. I don't believe that anymore. I don't believe that anymore. I don't believe. Why don't you buy in? God can change your life when you buy in. You believe that? You believe I preach the truth to you today? Stand up on your feet. No one moving in and out. Very reverent now at every campus. A miracle's about to take place. It's time to sell out your soul to Jesus and buy in. And say, I'm tired of this halfway stuff. I'm buying in. I'm going I'm coming to the cross and I'm going to be here. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to do what God's called me to do. With every head bowed and every eye closed all over this room. If you hear the Lord speaking to you today saying, this is your service. This is your word. This is your moment. This is your hour. Today is the day of salvation. And if you're backslid, if you're far from God, if you don't know you're right with God, this moment is for you. Pastor Franklin, pray for me. I know I'm not right with God, and I need to get right with God, and I'm ready to surrender to the Lord today. If that's you, boldly raise your hand right where you're standing. I want to see it all over this room. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Great, great, great. At every campus, raise your hand high. Keep it up. Keep it high. Keep it up. Keep it high. Raise it high. Unashamed. That's it. Say, I'm going to buy in. I, I really haven't bought in. I'm going to buy in today. I believe the cross. I believe the blood. I believe the name of Jesus is the power of God. Everybody at every campus say these words. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I believe in you. I'm buying in. I know other people are selling out. I know other people have turned to other religions, but I'm buying into the cross. I'm buying into the blood. I still believe there's no other name but the name of Jesus. And I still believe that the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all my sins. I still believe that there's a place called heaven and I can have eternal life if I'll put my faith in Jesus Christ. Now say, I'm in, Lord. Say this, I'm all in, Lord. I'm bought in. Now lift your hands and praise Him. We're going to praise Him just another minute. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Praise God. In our closing moments, I want to share with you one of the unprecedented opportunities that God has opened up for this ministry over the last several years. The work that we're doing in Israel is absolutely critical. 
The Eshkol region borders the Gaza Strip and it's plagued by near constant rockets and chaos. And here we're building the Eshkol region trauma center. We've broken ground on it and it's under construction as I speak. I believe that we are fulfilling the biblical prophecy of Isaiah that he spoke about in the 40th chapter when he said, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. I'm only going to ask you to seek the Lord and see what He would have you do. With your help, we will finish this in just a few months and have a grand dedication there in the Holy Land. And you'll have a memorial for your family in the Holy Land that says to God, I have loved the nation of Israel. I believe God will pour out blessings on you like you've never seen before. Please do your very best. We need your help on this project. Here's my announcer to tell you how you can be a part. From the imaginary shapes the clouds form to the mysterious blue hue. For most children, the sky is a place of wonder and beauty, but there's a place where that is not the case. In Eshkol, Israel, the sky is a place of terror and trauma for children that live in this war-torn territory. Terrorist rockets, kites, and helium-filled incendiary balloons fill the sky with fear. But thanks to your support, we are more than halfway to our $1 million commitment to build the Eshkol Region Play School Kingdom. Here, children will be able to play in a safe environment without fear of attack. They will also be able to receive counseling services to assist them in coping with ongoing trauma caused by these terrorist attacks from the Gaza Strip. As a thank you for your support in our initiative to comfort God's people, we would like to send you the Holy Week Collection for your gift of $1,000 or more this month. You'll have your name inscribed on the Comfort My People Wall of Recognition in Israel. For your gift of $300 or more this month, you may request the Holy Week gift set with a beautifully crafted communion set. With your gift of $50 or more, we will send you the Holy Week bundle, including Jensen Franklin's just released book, Acres of Diamonds. And with your gift of any amount, we'll send you a copy of the devotion, Eight Days to Change the World. Your gift and prayers are making a difference and bringing comfort to God's people in Israel. Visit us online today. Well, Sharice and I are so excited about the 2020 trip to Israel, the Holy Land Tour. This is gonna be the most special trip that we've ever had. When you go on trips like this, it's a form of blessing Israel. It's a form of saying, I'm blessing you, God, and I'm blessing your land, and I'm blessing the people. And when you do that, there's a blessing that comes back spiritually and in every other way. Can't wait to see you. Get on the bus, let's go. This program has been sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. We hope you've enjoyed this teaching by Jensen Franklin and thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Your prayers and financial support make these programs possible. For more information about this message and other ministry resources, visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv.